15 in the youth creativity and engagement category. May I invite our moderator for this afternoon session, Dr. Yasir Rafai, Acting Director and Legal Advisor of Rule of Law and Anti-Corruption Centre based in Doha, Qatar. May I invite the moderator to kindly introduce the Youth Creativity and Engagement Category Award winners and then on begin the session. Um, Assalamu alaikum. Um, let's, this is the second session uh, uh, which I, I, I was invited uh, suddenly as a moderator till uh, uh, Professor Edward will come back and uh, continue moderating the uh, third and fourth uh, sessions, uh, inshallah. Uh, this session, we, we will invite uh, the two winners in the category of youth creativity and engagement. Uh, uh, we will invite Accountability Lab and Fernanda Angelica Flores Aguirre. Uh, so they... So I, I, uh, we will start, I think, with Accountability Lab uh, with a short video on uh, Accountability Lab. Yes, thank you. Accountability Lab is an organization based in Washington, D.C., with the aim to promote fairness and accountability in as many countries as it can reach. They run an Accountability Incubator, a flagship program for young civil society leaders that invites them to build sustainable, effective tools for accountability, participation, and social impact in their societies. Selected accountpreneurs undergo an accelerated one-year program with hands-on comprehensive support for their ideas and initiatives. Integrity Idol, Another project run by Accountability Lab is a global campaign run by citizens in search of honest government officials. It aims to generate debate around the idea of integrity and demonstrate the importance of honesty and personal responsibility in public life. They hope to inspire a new generation to be more effective public servants. Integrity Idol began in Nepal in 2014 spread to Liberia in 2015 and has now evolved into a global campaign covering seven countries. Accountability Lab also run an Integrity Fellowship, the newest and most promising program to come from the Integrity Idol campaign. It is a month-long fellowship where the fellows are given opportunities to work with and learn from exemplary civil and public servants highlighted nationwide for their high integrity and accountability in their professional life. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you so much, uh, everybody. Uh, I'm so happy to, to be here. Thank you again to the Rule of Law uh, Center and the GIACC for, for hosting us. I echo the comments of my colleagues earlier about the incredible hospitality and generosity that we've received here in Malaysia uh, and the nonstop eating. Um, it really has been wonderful. Um, so thank you, thank you so much. Um, my name is, yes, thank you very much. My name is, is Blair Glencourse, uh, and I run an organization called the Accountability Lab. Um, my background is I'm, I'm from the UK originally, uh, and worked at the World Bank for a while on, on uh, governance issues and post-conflict um, situations and, and countries. Um, and then I worked for the Prime Minister, or the new, sorry, the new President of Afghanistan, Ashraf Ghani, for about five years, 
um, and learned a lot about governance and accountability and, and how you get people engaged uh, in fighting corruption and building integrity, particularly young people. Um, and I was really privileged enough to, to travel around the world with, with him talking to young people everywhere about the challenges that they face and, and the problems that they encounter. And um, often I was expecting them to say, well, we need, we need jobs, we need education, we need healthcare. But actually what I heard from them almost universally was we want justice, we want accountability, and we want people in power to stop being corrupt. Um, because we know that that is really at the heart of all of these other problems. If we don't have books in our schools, or we don't have medicines in our hospitals, or we can't get jobs because corrupt officials are giving those jobs to, um, to their friends or their family members, these are accountability problems. They're not actually education problems or healthcare problems. Um, so that's really at the, at the core of everything. Um, and, and having worked on this for a little while and, and talking to these young people, uh, the other thing that they said to me is actually corruption is not the problem. Uh, corruption is the symptom. The problem is that there is a lack of integrity within our societies. It's about our culture, it's about our norms, uh, it's about the way that we're, that we're brought up. And if we're going to challenge and, and face up to this big problem of corruption, we're going to have to build a culture of integrity ourselves. And all of us are going to have to play a role in this, particularly as, as young people. Uh, and young people are so important in everything that we're talking about today for lots of reasons that, that you know very well. Uh, in Malaysia, I was reading last night that 45% of your population is under the age of uh, 39. In the ASEAN na nations as a whole, it's about 65%. Um, in other parts of the world, Africa, for example, the median age, the average age now is 20 years old. Um, so just demographically, we, we have to engage young people in this conversation and in these actions that need to be taken. And of course, young people are a lot more connected than they've ever been before. And I would argue, uh, much more willing to, to challenge the status quo than, than many generations uh, before them. So young people are a, are a critical piece uh, of this fight against corruption and these efforts to build integrity. Um, but for young people, this has to be interesting. It has to be engaging. Um, Anti-corruption can be very technical. Um, and even, dare I say it, sometimes a little bit, a little bit boring uh, when we're talking about public financial management and building systems and laws and you know, we find this interesting because this is what gets us excited but, but for, for young people that's not always the case. Uh, so through the accountability lab we really began to think hard about how we can get young people everywhere engaged in, the, in these efforts um, and that means meeting them where they are uh, and what I mean by that is not, not saying to them come, come to a lecture and let us tell you about anti-corruption. It's about tapping into the places that they uh, already go, the kinds of um, things that they're already interested in, and seeing how we can infuse those with elements of uh, these discussions around integrity to, to make the process of learning about it and acting upon it uh, easier um, and more exciting for them. So we do uh, the Accountability Lab a lot around the world with, with music, we work with rappers, uh, we work with filmmakers, we work with citizen journalists and technologists, uh, and provide a lot of training and support and guidance um, to young people with good ideas uh, in these areas to build unusual and diverse coalitions for, for anti-corruption. If you think about, about rappers, for example, their music is inherently political, it's all about corruption and lack of accountability. So why are they not in these rooms talking about what they're doing and how they're feeling and how they can use their music to, to push for change? Um, and young people often have these tools. Uh, they, they know what they do and they do it extremely well, but they don't always have the support to, to build communities around them, to make them sustainable, uh, and to really come together to push collectively for the kind of change that they, that they want to see. So, so we're also trying to build these coalitions and, and find ways to help people come together. If we think about criminal networks, they protect each other. You know, they create um, 
groups that, that make sure that they don't get discovered uh, for the kind of things that they're doing, that they don't get prosecuted. Um, we need to create similar networks for good people um, to protect each other, to stand up. So it's not too difficult for one person to say, I want to be a person of integrity, because they're surrounded by others that say the same thing. And that makes it much safer. And of course, that's exactly what the rule of law and anti-corruption center is, is trying to do here as well. Um, so we, uh, one day in Nepal, which is a, a place where we have an amazing team of young people, we were watching uh, a TV show called Nepali Idol. Uh, I think you have a similar show here called Malaysia Idol, um, where people sing and uh, are voted on for, for being the best singers. And we thought, what about if we created a TV show uh, called Integrity Idol, where it wouldn't be people singing and dancing, but it would be government officials who have integrity, and we could turn them into national celebrities. Uh, and this gets to the point that, that Nuhu made in the first session. Anti-corruption has, has to be sexy. It has to be something that's fun and interesting and glamorous. And we thought mobilizing the media behind this um, through a TV show could be one way of, of doing that. Uh, luckily, the, the civil servants don't need to sing and dance. Um, they just have to be people of integrity. So we were sitting with our, our team in, in Kathmandu and said, right, let's start a TV show called Integrity Idol. So the very next day, we had about 200 volunteers who spread out all over the country and collected nominations from, from everybody. They went to tea shops, they went to government offices, uh, they even went to, to private homes and said, do you know a, an honest government official? Uh, if you do, please nominate them for this prize. And we got about 300 nominations. Um, with the help of a panel, we narrowed it down to five, and we filmed them. Uh, and then we partnered with a TV station and put them on national television and set up an SMS system so that people could vote for their favorite. And we had about $5,000 to do this. We didn't really have any money at all. And we were just amazed by the, the reaction. It was watched by about 4 million people, uh, which is about 10% of the population of Nepal. It was shared everywhere. It created very interesting, positive conversations about integrity uh, and the kind of people that, that were needed in government. Uh, and, and it inspired the next generation. Uh, if, we, if we think about anti-corruption, one of the problems is it's always very negative. Um, it's always about corruption, the problem. It's always about the wrongdoers. It's always about putting people in jail. And I agree that the, the rule of law needs to be enforced. But that approach doesn't always fill young people with much energy. Um, it, it doesn't always help them understand that there is a different future that they can help to build. And I think if we can flip this narrative uh, and make it about heroes, uh, about the do-gooders, not the wrongdoers, um, very much in the, in the way that uh, the Rule of Law and Anti-Corruption Center is trying to do too, I think that can really fill people with hope. And that's extremely uh, important. And that is what happened uh, in Nepal. Uh, and the winner was uh, an incredible man, a district education officer from a very remote part uh, of the country, who when he arrived in his district, um, he found that uh, teacher absenteeism was about 70%. When teachers did turn up, they, were, they would arrive drunk. Um, learning outcomes were extremely low. And, and he was a reformer. He was like many of you. And he said, I'm going to turn this around. I don't care what the cost is. So he went in, he gave out his phone number to parents, he fired teachers, uh, he even turned up in disguise wearing a fake moustache uh, at schools to catch uh, teachers who weren't attending. Um, and in the course of four years, he transformed uh, the learning outcomes in his district from the very bottom uh, of the tables in the pool to the very top. He's a true uh, anti-corruption hero. And so we famed him on, on national television. He became, he became famous. And when he returned home to his town, there were thousands of people on the streets chanting, he is the people's winner, he is our champion. It was incredible to see. It really um, fills you with hope when you see many young people coming together like that spontaneously to, to push for integrity. So we've run this, this campaign in Nepal for five years now. We just finished for the fifth time uh, this week. Um, but we also work in other countries around the world. Uh, like Liberia. And our team in Liberia said, well, th that's a great idea. We would love to do this here as well. So we started in Liberia in 2015. So we're now doing it for the fourth year there. Um, 
And again, the people who have come through this program are, are absolutely amazing. The lady, Jube, who won it the first year is a, is a nurse who did really, really impressive things during the Ebola crisis to make sure that, that the funds that were given to Liberia were spent transparently and accountable, accountably. Uh, the gentleman on the left there, Daniel, also a district education officer from the remote southeast of the country, um, was walking 20 miles or more every day to check on uh, teacher attendance in schools. And when we had the big ceremony, um, someone stood up and said, I'm going to buy you a motorbike so that you can now drive between these schools so it's not as difficult for you. Um, he hadn't been paid by the government for seven years when we found him. Uh, and there was a minister at the ceremony who said, I'm going to make sure you get back on the payroll. And these are small things, but it, it begins to build an understanding that uh, if you are a person of integrity, if you do the right thing when no one is watching, it can pay off. Uh, it, it can be something that... Um, that is not only the right thing to do, uh, but, but that can be rewarded in very public ways. And that uh, is incredibly powerful. Um, so now it's, it's grown to other places. We uh, started in, in Pakistan. Uh, the gentleman on the left there, Rai Manzoor, our winner, um, was, after he won, was called up the very next day by the, um, by the head of uh, Punjab province, the biggest province in Pakistan, and offered any job that he wanted. Uh, in the, in the province. Um, incredible uh, what this can do to, to change incentives. Uh, we run this in, in Mali. Um, the winners there uh, have been interesting because, because of the ongoing insecurity in that country. Uh, two of the three winners we've had so far have come from the military or from the justice sectors. Um, and are using this award to, uh, and the trust and credibility that it brings to push um, for changes within, within, those, um, within those sectors. We started in, in Nigeria. Uh, you heard all about Nigeria earlier, a fantastic country. And, and what was interesting in Nigeria when we did this for the first time last year was that four of the five winners um, were women. And, uh, and we also managed to get some wonderful... Nigeria has a very big media market, so, so we could tap into um, a lot of conversations around this and, and create some, some buzz and manage to get two amazing uh, Nigerian reformers, um, Dr. Obi and Dr. Ngozi at the, at the ceremony. Again, really amazing powerhouse women who are doing incredible things for accountability in that country. And the conversation became about, about gender and accountability. And um, if you think about it, many of the programs that address anti-corruption uh, and governance are not gendered in any way. It is presumed that, that men and women face the same challenges uh, when it comes to building integrity within systems. Um, but actually, they, they don't. Those challenges are very different. And there was a fantastic discussion about what that means in Nigeria. Um, and I think there's a lot more research and thinking to be done about that globally. We're running this now in, in South Africa um, at a very interesting time politically. Uh, and one of the things that we found about accountability, of course, is that there are certain moments, certain windows, where there are possibilities for pushing for change and for greater integrity, um, and, and those need to be taken advantage of. And one of those moments is, is in South Africa now, I would argue. So this campaign, I think, is, is beginning to tap into this, beginning to highlight, again, the, the amazing people at the local level who are doing the right thing. I think it... It could be argued that, that the same is true of Malaysia now, too. And, and um, so it's fantastic to hear that there's a new anti-corruption plan in the works and, and that this is such a priority for the new government. And we're about to start in Mexico um, and hoping to partner with Fernanda on that. You'll hear about her work in a minute. Um, and again, there, reframing the narrative. I think the narrative there has been for so long about the corruption uh, and, and the way that, that a lack of integrity is so entrenched within government that it, that narrative needs to be completely reversed. Um, and that can come through these kinds of efforts to uh, what we call name and fame honest people rather than naming and shaming uh, the bad people. So very briefly, what, what do we uh, think we're going to do next um, with the support uh, of this prize? I think um, we want to conti continue to do this. Uh, there are more countries where this can happen. Um, we want to celebrate these positive deviants, these people who are doing, doing the right thing. Um, and we want to work with them to translate their individual integrity into collective 
integrity, into values shifts within institutions because, of course, uh, all of us need to have integrity and it begins with all of us doing the right thing. Um, but we need others around us. We need to try and shift cultures within, within institutions because uh, if the rules that exist do not correspond to uh, the incentives and the, and the cultures and the values um, within institutions and within communities, then they're never going to work. Uh, we're scaling this, this competition, we're licensing the content, um, and we're building out the, the network of idols, connecting them to each other, um, and to civil service training schools, to act as mentors with universities, to give talks to young people. Uh, the, the video that you saw mentioned a fellowship that we're developing. All sorts of ways, I think, that we can begin to, to use these role models um, to, to push for change and to support this new generation of, of young people. Um, and I think we've learned a, th a few things through all of this. Uh, one is, is that fighting corruption and building integrity is a long-term challenge, of course. It's, it's generational, um, which is why young people are so important. This is not going to happen within five or 10 years. I think it's gonna be 30 or 40 years. Um, but if we can work with these young people in these ways, I think, I think we have a hope for the future. Um, it isn't easy, um, and it has to begin with, with all of us. Um, and although we uh, work mostly in developing countries, because that's where we have teams. Uh, I want to make it clear, of course, that, that this is a problem for all of us. In my country, the UK, we have significant amounts of corruption. The US at the moment also has very big problems with this. There are facilitators of these dynamics in the West. Um, and, and we want to start Integrity Idol there too. So we're talking at the moment to some media companies in the United States about doing it there. And I love the idea of, of starting a reality TV show to. Um, highlight integrity in the, in, the, uh, in the time of Trump. Um, and, and so finally, I think the point I'm trying to make is that uh, corruption is sustained by social norms. Um, there's a lot of research that shows that if, if a person thinks that everyone around them is corrupt, they are much more likely to engage in that behavior. So we need to shift social norms, and we have to do that um, through uh, showing that doing the right thing is is something that can be celebrated um, by holding up role models uh, and using campaigns, I would argue, like Integrity Idol to rebuild trust between people in power uh, and citizens. Um, and I'm running out of time, so I wanted to leave you with, with one question, which is um, perhaps we can do this in Malaysia. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Blair Glencourt. Uh, Uh, accountability lab uh, thank you very much uh, for uh, your thoughts and uh, uh, new ideas uh, let us remember that uh, this award is a creativity award so if if uh, uh, someone was waiting for a taxi for a long time and the taxi didn't come uh, so he thought he can make uh, an application named uh, uber or uh, grab this is creativity so you could wait for corruption to be here or everywhere or in, in any other country for a long time. But thinking about a new idea uh, in a creativity way uh, in order to fight corruption, this is what we wanted uh, to uh, emphasize in uh, this uh, award. So the, thank you very much for the new ideas and the creativity uh, in the ideas, of course and using also uh, the, the internet and uh, the media, uh, which we need to uh, use uh, for fighting corruption. Uh, the next winner, uh, uh, and, and she was a nominee last year also uh, for the award, but she won this year, uh, Fernanda Angelica Flores from Mexico. So, let's see the video. Since the age of six, civil and community associations have shaped the life of Fernanda Angelica Flores Aguirre. Her first introduction to community action was at home, when she participated in the Lions Club of Mexicali, in the program that her grandfather and her parents headed called Receive the Gift of Sight, through which they gave eye examinations, lenses 
and even site operations to people of limited resources throughout Mexico. From these beginnings, Ms. Aguera has expanded her community outreach, working in fields as varied as voter registration and motivation, gender equality in politics, and youth programs designed to give voice to the younger generation. She is currently finishing an MBA in order to further improve the effectiveness of her anti-corruption programs. Ms. Flores urges people to remember that if politicians and governors are in power, it is only because society gave them their trust and confidence through the voting process. For this reason, transparency and direct communication are fundamental parts of democracy, a message that Ms. Flores is keen to share and amplify. For this entrepreneur and anti-corruption warrior, promoting a transparent, corruption-free government is an act of inclusion in itself, bringing together young citizens and public officials to work side by side to shape their communities. You may take the floor. Sorry, I'm a little bit shorter. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, I'm very glad to be here. Thank you very much for this opportunity. And 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 this is this is very 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 very. <laughs> this has been a, a very honor. Uh, well, darkness of corruption will not pass through the light of society. And this is what we're what we were trying to do for the last six years. Uh, you know, there's a um, there's a lot of theory on how to end how to end corruption, and there's there are tools that our re research people has 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 given us, but as as if and if but if as young ones we don't take that that tools and make them happen, we won't we we won't say, say, um, we won't um, see them going through, and corruption will be st still still the same um, over the years. So I'm here to tell you um, some few of, of the tools that we have, we have already uh, used in our country, used in our state, and used in our city in order to recover uh, our politics and in order to end or reduce a little bit of corruption. Uh, first of all, I'm going to talk to you about um, this initiative that it is called Tree of Tree. What is this initiative uh, about? All, all our politicians were just very comfortable. And what we wanted to, to tell them and what we were reaching for is that they, they, they transparent and that they give us three declarations. The asset declarations, so we can know how much do they own. The second declaration that it's the potential conflicts of interest, that it's about what are their previ previous work positions and who are their friends and allies. And the last one, the taxes. Because, yeah, so many politicians back in Mexico do not pay taxes. So what we wanted to know was what do they have before they go into, into, into government and what do they have after? They, they, they go into government. And this was a big, 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 big initiative back, back in, my, in my place. And what, we do, what, what the young people do here to make this happen? Um, I'm going to need this. Yeah. OK. First of all, social media. Technology is our best ally. And what do we have to do? We have to expose the people who are, are not doing their jobs. First of all, we initiated this on 2015, and, and this year we had elections in our state. So what do we did? To all the candidates, we asked for these three, the, the three of three, these, these three statements. And the people who, the candidates who didn't, he, who did not want to, to, to give it to us, we exposed them on social media. We tell the people with the faces, with, their, with the links of the Facebook pages, with their numbers. 
the, there's this is also the district that they were they, they were um, representing and the political party they, they were from, and this was a big 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 um, a, a, a huge step. But we also need to to say who is who who is actually uh, um, who is actually giving us those those uh, those declarations. And for example, this is an example on how on how a politician. Uh, he gives uh, th those three declarations, and this is an example of who didn't. And this is the web page where people could find and uh, could find those assets because all all the declarations that they gave it to us, we make them public. And this is actually the web page where where even um, where they can they can find the, those declarations. But because that's a big big big. Um, that's a big thing that we need to do. We need to make everything public. We need to let the people know what is going on. And well, that was uh, on 2015, and we are keep doing this every time we have an election in, in our state uh, and in our country. We, are, we keep doing this. But what happened in 2016? In 2016, we, as a, as a nation, and a, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of NG, NGOs, and actually the ones who started with this was uh, with this uh, these associations. We 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 did a, a national initiative to make this uh, a law, to make this a constitutional obligation for for every for every public ser servant. So we divided the corruption acts, and we. Uh, we, we put them in different types of it, and then we, we put in this initi initiative how uh, they should be punished. And uh, to make this happen, we needed, uh, we needed these uh, 120,000 signatures of Mexican people who, who wanted to, to, to make this happen, and then we could, we could present it on the Congress. So what, do we, uh, what did we did as, as young ones? We, we wanted to make this happen. So we, we stood up, we raised our hand, and we said, we are going to get those signatures. And we, <laughs> it was a, a, a very, 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 very huge campaign. And do you know what happened? We not only, uh, we not only get those 120,000 signatures, we got 634,143 signatures all around Mexico. This was a huge step for transparency. This was a huge step for society, for common society, as us, because we were saying to the people that it doesn't matter if you're not in public service. It doesn't matter that if you're just a common citizen as we are, because you can make changes and you can make things happen. And you, we have the tools to make it happen. So we just have to organize ourselves and being together and work together and start making it happen. This was not uh, just our, uh, of course, it wasn't just um, our, um, our work. It was all nations' work, uh, hundreds of NGOs' work. And well, we are very proud of this. <laughs> and this, uh, well, um, we now have it our, and in our constitution, and we are still fighting for, for being obli obligated and public. It's, it's step by step. So what, uh, what this led to us after, after this, we, we had our anti-corruption national system. And the, the, the three of three initiative uh, take us to take, take a place to us in the anti-corruption national system. And we, what, what we did here is to take a seat in, on the table. Now we have uh, people common citizens that are also having voice and vote in this national anti-corruption system. Not, it is not now just about the congressmen and the, or the senators or the, or the uh, president of our republic. It's also about the, what the, the people want. And well, every time a national system is created, you should have a state system. At Mexico, we are a republic and we have 32 states. So we needed to build uh, 32 state systems. So we, we said, you know, 
at Baja California, that is the one state that I represent and where, where I am from, uh, we are gonna, we're going to make a good anti-corruption. Um, because what happened? Our governor, he wanted to design the prosecutor. He wanted to be the one who said who was going to be the one who could punish him. And we said no. And we, as the people said, we are not going to, to let, let you do that. And we create another uh, in, uh, citizen initiative, and we stood up and, and, and we, um, we innovated in, in this, in this, uh, at this, at, at this initiative, and with social pressure and a lot of participation of social citizens, we now have the most innovative um, and anti-corruption state system in Mexico. So that's also a huge step for our state, for our, for, our, um, for our city, but also for society. Because once again, we stood up just as people, just, just as young ones, and we, we, we said that we had a voice. And then we demonstrate all around Mexico. And well, there's another initiative that we have recently done that is No Boat, No Money. I don't know about here, but back at, back at Mexico, we have political parties. And political parties receive a lot, a lot, a lot of public uh, resources. So uh, political parties, they have, um, they have constitutional obligations. These constitutional obligations are that they need to improve and to increase um, educational, uh, civic education and to increase the voting in, in, uh, in the nation. They are not doing that. Uh, for example, at my state, at Baja California, not even the 30% of the people stands up and vote. That is, that, that's not supposed to happen in a democracy. So what are we saying? If you are not doing your job as a political party, we are not going to give you the money that you're receiving. So what uh, we, uh, th this initiative was first approved in another state, so we took it and make it happen in our inner state. So uh, we, we created the, the initiative, we, we, we went to society, society and we, we took a lot of signatures uh, for the people. People were very excited. People were, were wanting this initiative to be, to, be, to be a reality at Baja California. And what did, what did we do? We, we also exposed the people who didn't want it to have no vote, no, vote, no money uh, happen in our state. Uh, those, for example, these two are, are two congressmen, back at their state, state congressmen, that they, they, were, they were stopping our initiative. So what we did was, all over again, social media. You don't want, you, you're not doing your job, we're gonna expose you. And we're gonna put your face, and we're, we're gonna put your political party, and not just that. We're gonna put your phone number, we're, go, we're gonna put your um, email, and we're going to tell the people exactly what you are not doing it. And not just that. We're going to tell, tell them to call you and tell them that we want to make this initiative happen. And we, and we create like a little system in a web page where people could, could put their names and, and, and it out, automatically will send a letter to those congressmen uh, telling basically that they wanted to be, to, to to uh, um, um, see this initiative happen in our state. Uh, so, well, what happened with this initiative? Uh, right now, we are keep fighting for, for making this happen in our state. Uh, we have, it has been a long, long, long journey, but we have met a lot of, a lot of wonderful people. A lot of wonderful people that also have the same ideals and also are now having the courage to stand up and fight for for its states, for its state. And well, the conclusion that we have uh, got from every these initiatives and other initiatives that we have promoted is that we have a big problem in, in, in with civic education. People want to participate. People want to stand up. People want to raise their hands and their voices. But unfortunately 
They don't know how. And th that's what exactly what we're doing right now. We're going to schools, we're going to high schools, we're going to universities and telling people how they can participate, how also they can do these initiatives a reality. How can they talk to congressmen and congresspeople and tell them that they, what they want to see in their, in their state or even in the nation? And it, it has been... It has been pretty amazing how the young ones, they, they do want to participate. I, and they are very excited because they have a lot, a lot to tell, to tell, to tell, government, to tell government, government, sorry. And well, um, there are a lot of other initiatives that we want to promote, that, but we are just waiting because we know that we need to first end with, with the ones that I'm, uh, I was telling you and then uh, uh, um, start with the other ones, and here a, la, a little bit of the other ones that we already are al already have, and just are waiting for the time. And but it 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 you can divide it in three in three areas. We want to recover our politics, eliminating the politic uh, politician privileges. I know this is in Spanish. This is in Spanish. I'm sorry, but this is the names of the initiatives that we were going to promote. And the second one, uh, we want to recover our future. And the third one, we, we want to recover our peace. So, are you ready to change the way you act? Because the crisis of corruption can be solved. And how can it be solved? We have to change your, st you have to change your state of mind. Stop thinking that everything is lost. Have zero tolerance. If you see it, act. Tell your parents, if you're a young one or a child, don't, that don't ru ruin your future. And as a parent, be an example. Raise your hand, speak up in your community. Support leaders who fight against corruption. Don't know anyone, be one. Expose in media and make of technology your best ally. Participate in local and international efforts to stop corruption. Write to the Congress, and if they don't listen, run for, for the Congress. Of course. <laughs> Encourage everyone to say no to corruption. Learn as much as you can about to fight corruption. Then put your knowledge into action and insist, persist, and never, never desist. We accept to hold the torch to light the path of future generations in this battle against corruption. Being together is our strength. Fighting against corruption must never be a fight with guns, but with the spirit changing the concept of corruption within the heart of the people and with education. It is, has been my pleasure to, for, of being here. I'm speaking right now. From for hundreds of young people who is back in Mexico and who are fighting for these same initiatives. Uh, as a group, we are all volunteers. We don't receive any cent of government because we want to have our voice clean and we want to say what we want at the time that we want. Social media and the, and, the, and the media, the local media has been a great support to make all this happen. And we are going for more because we cannot let that corruption is still in our state and is still in our future. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Fernanda Angelica Flores, winner of Youth Creativity and Engagement. And, and also, uh, I have to repeat myself, that this is the Youth Creativity and Engagement uh, Award. Uh, so thank you very much uh, for the new ideas. Uh, and and uh, this is the future uh, of, of Mexico. This is the future of uh, every country all over the world. So that's why uh, we have an award for youth, uh, because we are thinking about the future. I think. Uh, now we open the floor for questions. And, and please ask, feel free to ask any, any question, don't, don't uh, hesitate, uh, because if you didn't ask your question now, and you'll go home uh, saying, oh, I, I should have asked that question, so please ask this question now, and don't hesitate.
Yeah, my name is Maria. Uh, thank you very much for sharing the efforts that you have made uh, to enhance integrity among the youth. I have kind of um, clarification to seek from Mr. Uh, Black Land Course. Um, it's very interesting that you have developed uh, idle campaigns, yeah, uh, and um, that would kind of ar arise uh, awareness among the society. But was there any kind of effort being made uh, among the youth? If you so have it, can you share with us uh, what are some of the initiatives or the self reflections that these youth of each country? have really uh, identified and what are some of the things that has been, um, could you say, uh, standardized uh, among the youth that at the end of the day, these are some of the things that the youth you know, feel that they're going, to, uh, they're going to take initiative to uphold their integrity. If you so have that kind of uh, studies, could you please share with us after the effort of the idle campaign? That's all, thank you. Thank you, Maria. Very good. Very good question. I'll mention a couple of, of things. Um, one is, I, I just touched on it at the end, but we created a fellowship through Integrity Idol now, uh, where young people can serve with, with the idols in government. So it's, it's a bit like an internship program, but um, a bit more hands-on, and they're serving specifically with people of integrity. And uh, what we've seen, we've now done a study of that. It's been going for three years. Um, Previously and, and generally within society, young people say, if I'm a person of integrity, I don't want to work in government because, because I don't think that I can maintain my integrity because everybody in government is corrupt. Um, the people that have come through our program have completely changed the way they're talking. They've, they've now, they're now saying, now I realize actually you can be a person of integrity within government. It's not impossible. And actually it's, it's extremely important that people, good people like us go into government. So um, that's very exciting and, and something we want to build on. And, and again, it's about changing this perception of, of government and the role that we can all play uh, as part of that. The other thing we're doing, which is really exciting is, uh, and, I, and I did touch on it briefly, is working with the civil service training schools. So the, the schools and the training that young people go into when they uh, are coming into government, um, to use the uh, integrity idols as mentors, um, but now we're even developing uh, in Nepal um, an incubator process where we're going to work with young civil servants as they come into government and as they are deployed into the provinces to try new ideas, um, to come up during their training with exciting different ways of, of pushing for, for accountability and anti-corruption, and then to support them to do that in practice. And then the things that work, we'll, we'll try and help the government scale up. Um, and in that way, again, infuse government right at the beginning with young people, uh, with innovation and with creativity and, and really trying to do different things with technology and changing rules and, and so on. Um, so, so we're seeing, uh, we hope, a lot, of, a lot of positivity, a lot more engagement in government and then with young people in government itself, uh, more innovation and, and more efforts to make the kind of change that is needed. Yes. Um, this question is for Fernanda. Thank you. Um, you mentioned that uh, you, when you, on your website, when you find that the, the government officials are not taking part in the three of three and they're not giving the declarations that you need, um, I assume that the gov those officials did not take that lightly. Like they, they would push back against that in some way because I, I feel like that's how some government officials are. Um, so what tools and techni techniques sorry, did your organization have in place to ensure that, that, that you were still able to continue with the work and not kind of bow to the pressure that probably would have arisen after you published their names? Thank you. Thank you, Sharia. Well, you, are, you always have to, uh, make, to talk to the society and make the society and the citizens your best, also your best allies. And you have to tell them exactly what is happening. You have to be totally transparent with them. And if the society is with you, if your community is with you, then it doesn't matter what they say. Because the, the society will know they are wrong. Because you were transparent and you were completely clear with the society from the beginning. 
and you were telling them that they were they were not doing it so they they were they, oh, let me tell you a story yeah the, <laughs> the ones that, that we are here um when we when we were uh, at this and at the first campaign and in twin, 2015 uh, several uh, several candidates came to us and told us you know i'm just giving you this because I, i'm giving you everything of what i am just because on the streets people told me to do so because people tell me that they wouldn't vote for me if i if i wouldn't deliver you these publications so that's our strength is our strength the society and we were telling in in social media and our lo in local media we were telling people tell your candidate that you won't vote for them if they are not commitment committed committed with transparency if they do not deliver those three declarations then don't vote for them and tell them and people did and people did and and and, and that was a huge step thank you thank you I think there are some questions coming. Yes, yes. Yes. Assalamu alaikum and um, good, mo uh, good morning again. Um, I hope I pronounced your name right. Aguere? Yeah? Aguere, okay. Um, I just have one question. Throughout this endeavor that you, um, you launched, uh, this, this creative project you have, that you have done, was your life ever threatened at any point? Because I know Mexico is a very sensitive country. I know people get go into jail for, you know, voicing, you know, your rights? Of course I have. But I'm more scared of watching the new generations and tell them that we did not do anything. That we knew that corruption was a problem and that corruption was stealing their future and that we did not do anything. And I know any day anything can happen to me. But at least I was fighting for what I believed it was the right thing. Yes. Yes. And then. Ades, senorita. Welcome to Malaysia. As a parent of a teenager, yeah, because I'm very impressed with uh, both of what you have shown and all that, but how to convince the teenager, for example, my daughter, that the key is integrity? Because we follow the ministers, they follow the parents, so the example of the parents and the ministers reflect back on the civil servants and also on the children. Yeah? Because previously our tagline was El dinero es el rey. Cash is king. Yeah? So I would like to learn from your experience to tell us how to teach our children to go on the correct path full of integrity. I agree, the key is integrity. With integrity, you do not have corruption, all right? And last but not least, to you, Senorita, vaya con Dios. Thank you. Muchas gracias. Gracias. Well, first of all, uh, we should all be an example. If, if we want the young ones to have integrity, we must... We, we must ourselves uh, be an example for all of them. Uh, I know that, in, for example, in our case, the ones that we are fighting against corruption, the, the, because I'm not alone, there's a lot of, of young other ones that are, are in Mexico. Uh, we know we have um, 
um, a really a, a true um, co um, compromise uh, that we cannot fail. Uh, we we need to be straight all the time, and we need to have the integrity uh, and and to show them that it's a, yes, it is a long path, but we can make things happen all together. And you have, and and how to how to make young ones to be part of this? Make them part of this. Just invite them. They want to participate. They want to be part of something big. They want to change their nation. They want to change their world. Their world. They know that things are not. Oh, they're, they're, they are not right, and they want to be part of that change. You just have to give them the tools, and you just have to invite them, because we we always say, oh no, but they don't partic participate. But many of the, of the times, we don't let them, or we, we don't encourage them, or we don't have civic education. At Mexico, they erase civic education for, from the elementary school. That's a huge problem. So just let them be part and be an example for all of them. Can, can I pass also the question, yes, to Blair? Just very briefly to add to that, I can I completely see. agree. Um, and I, th I think when Fernanda says be an example, uh, I would say it's, it's not just the big things, it's the very small things. You know, integrity is, is turning up on time, it's, it's keeping your promises. It's all of these things that, that children see us do or not do, and they learn from that. And it's, it's that, that that can grow when it, when it doesn't happen into larger issues of integrity and, and corruption. So um, make it fun, make it interesting, and, and live by your word, I think, is the way to do it. Any other question? I think we... Uh, I think now we, we ended this uh, second session. Uh, 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 thank you very much for uh, our uh, use and creativity and engagement uh, winners. Uh, accountability Lab, uh, Blair, uh, Fernanda, Angelica Flores. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And, and 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 now I think we have to go to my favorite time, lunch time. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. See Thank you, you Dr. Yasser Rafai, moderator of this session this morning, and the recipients of the Youth Creativity and Engagement category, representative of Countability Lab, Mr. Blair Gancos, and Ms. Fernanda Angelica Flores Aguera of Mexico for sharing with us today your inspiring stories. Thank you once again. With that, ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of this morning session. And on behalf of the organizers of this seminar, we are pleased to invite you to join us for lunch. Our ushers will guide you to the lunch venues. There are three different venues that will be serving lunch this afternoon at level two as well as the ground floor. For your information, the prayer room is located at level four. And kindly be reminded that session three will commence at two o'clock sharp. Thank you and do enjoy your lunch. <laughs>